It is now coming up to 6am. It is. The sun is rising in the city of angels. So there we were at 6am in Los Angeles, beginning our week covering WrestleMania. We laughed. We drank. We ran around Walmart being dickheads. And I also scratched a rental car as well. Uh, But it wasn't just about the two-day parking nightmare at the SoFi Stadium that was WrestleMania. It was also uh, about the fantastic indie shows uh, we got to see from um, Effie's Big Gay Brunch down at the uh, Ukraine Centre in West Hollywood, uh, the WrestleCon Super Show, to Pandemonium at Don Quixote, which is the first one we saw. Uh, They were all excellent. And here are a few of our favourite moments, uh, favourite matches, uh, favourite wrestlers from these shows. Uh, We're basically going to be combining these uh, with archive footage uh, that we've stolen from elsewhere on the internet. So uh, thanks, internet. So first up, the WrestleCon Super Show, Vikingo versus Commander versus Black Taurus. Uh, the performers who I think have really broken through, obviously Vikingo, but Commander, you cannot say, you know, you can't have really one without the other yeah. uh, f- for this event. I mean, this is a state-of-the-art 2023 match. Mm. This is this is not the future of pro wrestling. It's here, but nobody else is doing this. Yeah. It is their rope work when they were... You know, there were bits where Vikingo and, and Commander were on the same rope looking at each other. Yeah. They're both running down and then going off. Yeah, into- running towards each other, down the ring ropes, and then oh. diving off. Will Ospreay had such high-level matches for so long, and everyone was just going, but sooner or later he's going to do himself in. And, yeah. he did, and he did. Yeah. And I think, you know, you do look at Vikingo and just go, you know, you, you're doing this a lot, but all that has to happen is it has to go a little bit wrong yeah. once, and then you're like, and now I've got a persistent shoulder injury that'll yeah. never go. So there is something awful about going. There's an inevitability. We're seeing, we're but enjoy it while... while while that sun is shining, <laughs> get out there. Get out there and see it. To see, to see someone like him in, in real life is... Um, I mean, just breathtaking. Yeah. Just someone who is at the very, very top of the game. I think head and shoulders above. And you can argue he's not got psychology, but you didn't. Lucha isn't particularly about that. You can argue that it's just spots that don't really, you know, have uh, repercussions and everything. But I tell you what, you could put him in front of anybody, regardless of what they think of wrestling. You could yeah. take. You could put somebody who really loathes wrestling. Yeah. You could say, just give me twelve minutes with this guy. Watch this. From the Tokyo Joshi Pro Show at the Globe in Los Angeles, Mew Watanabe. There was a standout performer for me, and uh, that performer was Mew Watanabe, mm. who we'd seen at the WrestleCon show. Yeah, she was incredible. She, she is absolutely brilliant, and I'd, I'd sort of just done a little Google search uh, on her, and people were saying she tends to be the Western fans' favourite ah, performer. You've been tricked. I have been tricked. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I absolutely am a Western fan, so I was pleased <laughs> to see that my sensibilities align with the majority <laughs> of wrestling fans. And uh, there, there's the thing about her is she is... Uh, uh, sort of brute power Mm. and what she ended up doing was a thing that we talked about on a previous show which is we saw a small person slam a big person yes there was a Hulk Hogan Andre the Giant moment with Max the Impaler and that to me is I suddenly realised yeah that is the the essence of wrestling (laughs) and Mia Watanabe did exactly that and if you're going to have a signature move, uh, it may as well be fucking amazing. <laughs> this is Mizuki's whirling candy, which she hit beautifully each time we saw it. It was like something had short-circuited in reality. She did a crossbody on yeah. her opponent. She came off the ropes and did a crossbody. But while she was, I mean, just inches away, while she was still sort of flying on that horizontal yeah. sort of plane, she just suddenly did a 360 spin in midair. <laughs> so that her whole body rotated before she hit. Couldn't work it out. (laughs) And if I was Vikingo, I'd look at that and I'd just go, ah, actually, she's the best. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. the best now. <laughs> no one's ever done that before. Aussie Open uh, worked Ring of Honor and the WrestleCon Super Show and, and a couple of other places as well. And they were awesome every single place they went. Aussie Open have been <laughs> one of the sort of, I think, breakthrough acts so far of this WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. Um, they're, they're guys who I've seen for years in England. Um, they've, they've recently... 
the pandemic slowed it down, but they went to New Japan. They've teamed w alongside Will Ospreay, who is someone obviously they know from the British scene. And they have come through now where they are having really, really high level matches. But no one's quite pulled the trigger on them. No one's quite gone, let's have them win titles at the minute. And that needs to change. I think they're, they're a really, really good act. What's funny about them is they have Mark Davis with his disgusting 1980s Aussie Ian Botham look. And Carl Fletcher is, if you like, the small man in the group. Yeah. But he looks like a light heavyweight, mm. but he's somehow been scaled wrongly. So he's about... He's about eight foot tall. <laughs> and he's just... Oh. And so the two of them are this, you know, really good, hard-hitting, crisp tag team. Um, and everything we've seen them in, they've been, you know, up there as the best thing in it. Uh, one wrestler we saw a few times over the week uh, was a kid bandit who fought in uh, Los Angeles seven times in one week. They're also the promoter of Pandemonium. So, blooming busy. I, I like a lot of kid bandits sort of thoughts on on wrestling because they're very different to my own right. they are seen through the prism of anime and computer gaming yeah which or video gaming i'm old um which is sort of very different for me which is my real sort of framework is what does adrian adonis do <laughs> <laughs> and can it be replicated again um they said uh, in an interview, wrestling is action theatre and wrestlers are just jock theatre kids. There's nothing more queer than theatre. Wrestling is a form of self-expression and performance art. Yeah. And I love I love people who have thought about it mm. in a way that I sort of agree with. But if I said, you just, oh, here he is. <laughs> here he is. He's going read his Roland Bart book, you know. <laughs> no, he's, ne oh, he's never had a what difficult it, time of things. If you love talking about fucking wrestling, <laughs> it's so much. Why don't you do a... M.A. in it, you know. Um, uh, there was a, a good little... Your man, Randy Savage. <laughs> so thanks to all of you who followed us over on uh, patreon.com forward slash wrestleme and on this YouTube. Do keep watching uh, this channel uh, for all of our WWE and uh, WCW slop we give you every week. Do like this video. Do subscribe to the channel it, and tell your friends. It does make a huge difference uh, because Banya Bat is bashing out a couple of videos uh, every single week and they're epic. Every single last one of them. So do keep watching the channel. Ta-ta!